definitely. Uh, we're ready. Yeah, I think we're ready to get started here. So, uh, so first and foremost, so wait, sorry, Major, you are you tracking the Cowboys? I have another loss coming up this week. No, Monday? sir. I think that's <laughs> that's false news, inaccurate. Uh, I've already talked with the chaplain. We've already prayed for the Cowboys on a Sunday night win against or against a uh, Monday night win against the Giants. So he'll be standing by for support. You know, there's only so many miracles that you can dive in. You know. Sir, I advise you to pray for one. Perfect. <laughs> well, you know, it is what it is. I'm looking yes. forward to Tuesday morning. That's all I got to say. Um, hey, so first and foremost, uh, I just want to say uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for what you all do every single day. And, and thank you for the warm welcome uh, onto this team. You know, every single day as I interact uh, with each and every one of you, as I'm blessed with the opportunity to meet you and learn all about who you are as a person and what you contribute to, to this team, I'm, I'm just so impressed. And I'm honored uh, to be here and to serve with you uh, to do what we need to do, which is support our warfighters uh, uh, in the field today and set the conditions for their success in the future. So uh, before we started the town hall, I'll probably say that about three or four times uh, throughout you know, the, the discussion today, but I just want to say thank you very much. Um, you know, I, I've been a user and a consumer of AMCOM, you know, for my entire career, you know, and I'm really just, uh, you know, and I, and I could not and my teams could not have been as successful as they've been, whether it be in aviation or air defense uh, or with long range fires. You know, um, we, we definitely would not have been able to do the things that we've done, you know, uh, in my career without this team. And again, I'm just I want to say thank you. Um, and uh, I'm glad to be part of it. Um, with that being said, I think I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Nitty. Yep. So uh, if you go to the next slide, we'll uh, go over the agenda real quick. So as always, we'll start off with employee recognition, um, <clears throat> highlight some of the great work that our teammates are doing across the command. Uh, the CG will give an operational update hitting on some of the key efforts that are ongoing right now. We'll talk, a, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll talk a hybrid work environment. Um, and then as always, we'll talk upcoming events and we'll answer uh, any questions that you may have. Uh, but we're going to start off with our most valuable players for July. Yes, sir. This is one of my favorite parts uh, of the town hall is taking a moment to recognize some of these hardworking people that we have out there. I mean, the, the team works hard every day, but just taking this moment to recognize a few, if I may. So I'll just go ahead and start with Mr. Lowry from ACLC. Made significant contributions in support of Fort Rucker initial entry rotary wing training. His outstanding dedication to support. Uh, subject matter expertise and superior logistical knowledge greatly enhanced Army fleet readiness for the UH-72 Lakota program, resulting in a 2% not mission capable supply rate for the reporting period ending in July of 22. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lowry. That's no easy task. Next, we'll talk uh, Mr. White from ALC. Represents the Threat System Management Office as the site lead for aerial flight targets western at White Sands Missile Range in Fort Bliss. He is the sole TISMO government representative at the test range. He has significantly strengthened collaboration with partners and stakeholders. If you've ever been out to that area, that, that is a huge area, and there's a lot of partners and joint uh, partners that work with that, so that is no easy task. So, Mr. White, thank you for what you've done out there. Continue to do that, please. Uh, Mr. Miller from the G2, coordinated across both PEO missiles and space and PEO aviation, to create a ASALT directed product that addressed the intelligence requirement program office needs to complete testing requirements throughout the acquisition process. Uh, Ms. Miller worked with the, her intelligence counterparts and associated data systems to create a product that addresses the intelligence collection priorities of the program office with both PEOs. So talking with one and working with one PEO is, is, a, is a huge task, but doing both PEOs, uh, that is a huge task. So Ms. Miller, thank you very much for that effort. Uh, next is Mr. Childers from the G6, develop multiple processes and procedures to support the current risk management framework effort for AMCOM facility related control systems, as well as spearheading the effort. Mr. Childers also developed an information spillage crosswalk that describes the jobs, roles, and work requirements for all involved in AMCOM entities. Now that's 
we were talking about that last night for as roles, responsibilities, and authority. So just this right here is going to be huge in helping us figure that out. So thank you, Mr. Childers, for that. Uh, next is Ms. Rubio uh, from the G8. She took on additional duties at the request of the previous G8 as AMCOM's component administrator providing tireless customer service to nearly 225 financial management certified employees across the AMCOM enterprise. So Ms. Rubio, thank you very much for volunteering for that and taking that duty on. Next is Ms. Myers Brown from Letterkenny Army Depot. She made a significant contribution in support of the Directorate of Missiles and Aerospace Readiness. Through her superior technical ability, she was able to reduce the number of work breakdown structures that had errors and also ensure that programs were not being overrun. Man, I, simple, thank you. I couldn't imagine taking that task on. Next is uh, Ms. Northington from USADA. She sets a high standard of excellence in her performance of duty as a test measurement diagnostic equipment calibration technician for TSC White Sands Missile Range Physical Standards Laboratory. With a large workload in our secondary reference pressure section, she alone acted in providing continued calibration and repair support with low experience. I ask everyone here and online to go ahead and give me a round of applause for these MVPs. Nitty, uh, over to you. Yep, so we'll do uh, length of service. So we're all caught up on our length of service, and these are the <clears throat> length of service awards for September. So 30, 35, 40, and 45 years of service <clears throat> across these 25 folks. 900 uh, years of experience. It's hard to believe, you know, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the level of experience that our workforce has um, and the dedication that they have. So um, for all the folks on this slide, thank you for your years of uh, service to the government in support of, of the Department of Defense. So I think we got one more to highlight. Yes, sir, we do. So next slide, please. I think we have two more. Hey, go, just go back. Well, how about a round of applause for it? For <clears throat> so as, it, as I have said many times uh, on this stage and walking around, it's such an honor and a privilege to come to this organization and work with the team members. Uh, walking in and seeing the smiling faces and the faces that are just ready to get to work uh, and then the ones that I get to see on MS Teams, right? It, it just highlights my day uh, and it just motivates me to work. But I had the honor and the privilege of working with this individual up here in the center of the screen directly throughout the day. And, and a lot of you know her and her contributions she has made uh, to this organization and dedication she's had. She's worked for every AMCOM uh, CSM uh, that's, that's been here prior to me. But this year she was put in for the AUSA Civilian of the Year Supporting Staff Award. Not only was she recognized, but she also won the Redstone Huntsville Chapter Award for that. And it was such an honor. She asked me to go to the AUSA dinner and receive the award on her, her behalf uh, the night before this picture was taken. So it was such an honor to, to go there uh, and to represent her and to receive that award. But more importantly, to bring it back to the office and, and give it to her uh, with the CG uh, that next day. So it was such an honor to do that. I'm so proud of Miss Sheila Crutcher. So if you would please join me in a round of applause for her. So I think we have one we more. We do sir. We have one more. So this, this is, is awesome. Let's we'll, we'll just keep going. Yep, just late breaking. We actually don't have a slide for this, but AMC uh, yesterday, uh, they actually announced the uh, 2021 Lewis Della Monica Award, uh, which recognizes uh, high performing AMC employees. And we had one of our own, Mr. Todd Cobb from uh, ACLC, who is actually a, an award winner for the calendar year 21 award. Uh, he supports the Fire Center of Excellence at Fort Sill. And because of his uh, dedication and his hard work, he was able to uh, help meet sustainment level uh, readiness requirements uh, for over 18,000 pieces of equipment supporting the Fire Center of Excellence, um, and he helped 
uh, train over 35,000 soldiers across the field artillery uh, artillery community. So uh, congratulations to Mr. Cobb and thanks for a job well done and join me in a round of applause for him. Sir, I think we're gonna do the operational update now. Go. All right, so it is amazing uh, to to get to come to work with uh, all these great people. And I, like I said up front, I'm honored to be part of this team. Uh, the last few days I've spent uh, time in AMC headquarters and had the opportunity to go through the commander's conference and the commander's forum. And what I wanted to do is just, uh, you know, just kind of provide you some feedback and highlight uh, some of the discussions uh, that were occurring in the commander's forum. One, one of them, which I thought was, uh, you know, was where we started was just a, a gentle reminder of why we exist, you know, and it, uh, you know, the when you think about it, you know, why does our army exist? Well, it exists to fight and win our nation's wars, you know. And I know that those that uh, you know that have been part of this organization for a while, we can come to work every day and we get lost a little bit in the daily routine, mundane tasks. But when it's all said and done, we exist to support and enable our soldiers and civilians to win on the battlefield and fight and win our nation's wars. You know, now having prevent wars, right? We gotta be strong up front so we can, uh, we can deter, you know, but when it comes down to it, we've gotta be able to fight and win. Um, and this team is a big part of that and enabling our team to be able to do that. You know, the second thing is, is that, uh, which wasn't lost on me either, is we're also in the, in the midst of a, a major transformation. It's the biggest transformation our army has gone through in the last 40 years. You know, so as we're coming out of, you know, uh, the global war on terror, you know, and as we're, we're fighting, you know, or supporting, you know, this stability in the world, you know, with some, you know, just crazy things that are ongoing, whether it be in Ukraine or, you know, uh, in the Pacific theater, you know, there's just uh, this world is there's a lot of chaos that's ongoing in the world and our our troops, you know, our efforts are providing the support that's in there, but we're also a transforming army. And this is the largest transformation we've undertaken, you know, in, in 40 years. And there's no doubt that if we get this right, we'll ensure that our future soldiers are able to fight and win our nation's wars at fast um, And then and then finally, you know, we can't do any of this if we don't have great people. You know, people are the foundation, you know, for all the things that not only this organization does, but our army does. And it's our Army's greatest asset is our soldiers, our DA civilians, and I would say our contractors that support the values of our organization and enable us uh, to be ready to fight and win our nation's wars. You know, and I, I thought it would be important to kind of highlight that, you know, because as I sat through the discussion in the commander's conference yesterday, you know, it's important to come to work every day and understand what our purpose is, you know, and, and why we exist. You know, and then truly recognize that you all are making a difference every single day, you know, in, in, in a matter that enables us to protect our values, you know, and to ensure that we're able to fight and win our nation's wars. So again, I just want to just start off with that that's in there. Second thing I wanted to highlight is, uh, you know, is, uh, is the CH-47, MH-47 O-ring issue that we had. I know some might be tracking or read it in the New York Times, uh, but you know certainly we had a, a challenge uh, with with a uh, the improper O-ring being installed on our our CH-47s, uh, and it was causing some fires in the aircraft, right? And uh, obviously that was not necessarily a, a good thing when an aircraft catches fire, you know. Um, you know, so we we this team right figured out why the fire was being caused track down, narrow the scope of the problem, you know, and then very expeditiously solve the problem with getting raw material, you know, to, you know, to the vendors to be able to produce uh, the O-rings uh, that are, are going to be required to replace and protect and make sure that our, our soldiers um, are, are safe going forward. So I just want to say thank you. It was truly amazing to watch, you know, uh, this, this event occur and this organization respond as rapidly as it did in order to protect our soldiers that are flying, you know, that are in harm's way, uh, deployed around the world, uh, and uh, and now can fight safely. So I just want to say thank you, and I, and I am amazed on, on how well the team did. I just want to make sure I passed off my gratitude. The second thing I want to provide, an, or the third thing I want to provide an update to is uh, 
the missile system assistant reporting. You know, a huge effort, you know, just being installed. First Brigade has been installed, you know, and what that is, that really enables us to see the readiness uh, and consolidate, uh, have a holistic view of the readiness of our missile systems, specifically our ADA systems. You know, before it was very disparate reports that were coming up, piecemealed, run through the contractor. It was a, you know, or the OEM, it was a, it was a 30 day delay before we really could see the readiness and it wasn't accurate, you know, but through this organization's hard work, we were able to put together, you know, a, a common operating picture and understanding where we can have a systems of system reporting in real time, see and understand what the readiness levels are of our ADA units and, and enable a, a better reporting, which means we can be more responsive to ensure that uh, we can help maintain their readiness with, uh, with supply in particular and maintenance. Um, I would tell you that the next unit's going to start this week um, and uh, the team's already moving out. Uh, they'll, they'll start the initial stuff next week uh, and we'll just continue that process until we get all of our ADA units uh, reporting on a common operating system to ensure that we can see ourselves and understand what the requirements are moving forward. Uh, the end of year uh, budget is coming. I know it's uh, not new, uh, the end of uh, September, beginning of October, and I appreciate everyone's patience and hard work. Uh, to ensure that we've leveraged the contract authority that we've had and the resources, uh, the precious resources that our taxpayers, uh, you know, enable us through Congress uh, to maintain the readiness and to use it in a manner that uh, buys down future risk and readiness. And uh, I know this is always the end of the year. We're trying to, you know, make sure that we have the, the, the closeout done correctly. And I appreciate everyone's efforts uh, to, to do that. And it's always uh, an exciting times. I was sharing a uh, you know, I was sharing how we do it in a, in a tactical unit. We unplug all the computers. We send all the 92 Alphas and Yankees out on leave, you know, but, uh, you know, you all are obviously well ahead of that and are figuring out how to make sure we spend uh, the, the money appropriately and we close out the end of the year the right way. Uh, the support to Ukraine, you know, I alluded to it earlier, you know, but, um, you know, the, uh, the, the support to Ukraine is making a huge difference. You know, when you think about freedom, you know, and enabling people to fight for their freedom, you know, it, it really is amazing. You know, and this this organization is ensuring that people can stand up to the bully on the block, you know, and protect themselves and defend their right to live their life the way they want to. Uh, so I just want to say thank you for that. Um, I know it's a lot of Saturdays or Sundays, you know, the, the presidential directives come out on Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays, it's uh, math and movements and Monday morning, it's updates to, to make things happen. But I appreciate the team's uh, collective efforts to ensure that we are delivering the material uh, to our partners uh, in the region. And also we're en enabling the units uh, that have been deployed, uh, 5th Corps and 18th Airborne Corps uh, to stand with NATO uh, and uh, defend our way of life that's out there. So I know that is uh, occurring 24-7, all through the, you know, seven days a week. Uh, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the team. It is truly making a difference uh, on the ground. And I know we see it in the news, uh, but, you know, when you read uh, some of the, the secret or TS level reports, it's making a tremendous difference. Uh, in, and the effects are, are awesome. And you guys are, 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 are ensuring that it's getting done. So I want to say thank you. Uh, the last thing I'll say for our uh, operation update is uh, the mandatory training. I know uh, the G3 probably put that bullet on there for me to remind everyone to ensure that we complete all the requirements, you know, but uh, um, in all seriousness, um, you know, we, we have a responsibility to complete our mandatory training and we'll, we'll just continue to get after it. Uh, but I just want to say thank you. You know, thank you for the amazing, you know, support uh, and thank you for what you do every day. It is truly making a difference, saving soldiers' lives and enabling people around the world to defend themselves. We'll go to the next slide, please. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about uh, the hybrid work environment. You know, as, as I talked about up front, you know, people are our most precious resource, you know, and our mission, you know, is our responsibility. You know, so we've got to take care of our people, but we've got to accomplish the mission. And, I'm, and I really rely, obviously we rely on the directors and the supervisors to, to carry that out and to ensure that that gets done. Um, I know uh, General Royer had issued, you know, a policy, a draft policy a few months ago. Uh, we are working with uh, the union in arbitration to, you know, to come to conclusion on that. But in the interim, I wanted to issue general guidance uh, and the general guidance to the supervisors 
to ensure that there was a, you know, a general understanding and expectation of what the supervisor's role was as we're bringing, you know, people, you know, into the workforce and back to work and to create, take some of the lessons that we've learned over the last uh, few years, you know, as we've navigated this uh, global pandemic. Uh, so the guidance is out to the supervisors and really the expectations is, you know, to take care of your people, you know, but get your, get the work done you know, and uh, come to work and, and make a difference, uh, you know, uh, as we come to work every day, uh, like you've done in the past. Um, as we think through the, uh, the the implementation of the guidance, you know, the, the it really takes the individual dialogue with the supervisors to understand, you know, what the responsibilities are for, for each level and the directors to ensure that the missions are, you know, are being accomplished uh, across the board. So I just want to highlight that for everyone that, We've issued guidance. We'll continue to work with uh, the union through arbitration. You know, we'll come up with an adjusted policy. You know, uh, later on, but I wanted to ensure that the initial guidance was was pushed out there. Um, there's uh, no changes to some of the things that were in there. I just want to highlight. You know, reasonable accommodations would go the way they've normally worked through in the past. You know, by the regulation. You know, and just ensure that uh, we we submit those, re, uh, you know, in accordance with what the regulation states. You know, and they'll be processed uh, as they've always been done in the past. But the guidance is to uh, work through the process of getting the job done. You know, and ensuring that we're we're accomplishing the mission and taking care of our people. Okay. Go ahead. Next slide, please. Okay, sir. We got some upcoming events I'd like to talk about with everybody. So the ADA symposium at Fort Seal, uh, the 26th to the 29th of September. I'm tracking Mr. Hudson and uh, Colonel Albright and, and Sergeant Major Moki from Letterkenny Army Depot will be representing up there. I'm sure that's going to be a great time. Uh, so we have a the Columbus Day holiday is the 10th of October. Uh, AUSA annual convention the 10th to the 12th of October up in DC. Uh, but what I see is missing on the slide is the Army 10 miler that's on the night. So I know a lot of you have been training. You're out there getting after it because at the beginning of the year, I asked you to get, to get in the Sparkman Center, Wellness Center and, and get after your, your health. So I know a lot of you are training and looking forward to this event. So I look forward to your times uh, when I come back from uh, AUSA. So those of you who's gonna take up that challenge. Okay, so uh, Quad A Cribbins Conference is the 14th to the 16th uh, November. That's gonna be here at, Redst uh, at Huntsville. Uh, and then AMCOM 101 Aviation, the 16th to the 17th, uh, which will be here uh, at Redstone. They kind of piggyback off each other, kind of building that momentum. So that's it for what we have for upcoming events for now. So next slide, please. We'll move on to some Q&A. So, sir, I think they have some questions in the queue for, for the team up here. I see some head shaking. So, OK, unless there's questions in the audience, if, if the audience wants to start first, we have some microphone monitors on the left and the right side. Oh, first question, who's going to win the Giants-Cowboys game on Monday night? <laughs> okay, it seems Nothing like there's... Nothing online either. Sir, uh, from online, there's actually only one question with 319 parts, so <laughs> bear with me. Uh, so really back to the telework and, and the telework policy uh, that I know is coming, but just on the general guidance, um, the concern being the regular day off and how would that compute into the telework, um, you know, three days in versus two days off or out, sorry, telework. Yes. Is that in relation to all? It is not, sir, I guess. Uh, well, I guess it would be. Yeah, it would be the Oz RDO, and then and then how does that factor into your uh, your guidance for uh, you yeah. know? Bottom line, it should be no uh, treated no different uh, than you know a leave day or a, or uh, it, you know an approved uh, absence day. Um, the the supervisors will work through the work schedule uh, with the individual and the team, ensure that the and the directors to ensure that work is getting done. You know, and they'll balance it out. But it's not to punish someone you know, uh, in a manner that uh, just because you're on leave doesn't mean, you know, for the first five days of a pay period, the second five days, you know, there's there's no telework. Uh, does that answer the question? Yes, sir, I believe it does. Um, and then on kind of on the same line was that. So that was one of 319, you said? Yes, sir, we're down <laughs> to 318 now. Uh, oh, two more came in, 321. Um, 
this really the, the telework uh, authorization level is that supervisor or is that director and specifically can you address any disparity between directors on on implementing implementing the guidance yeah so the, one of the reasons why we're issuing the general guidance is just to kind of level the playing fields and ensure that you know not not you know one size doesn't fit all you know but uh, just to give some general guidance that's in there and really uh, you have the non-supervisors. The expectation is, you know, what's really important. I talked about up front is our people, right? So, and and our people are important. We want to invest in the, our people. We show these slides. We talk about the amount of experience that we have, you know, in this workforce. Well, that experience, we've got to make sure we're translating back and forth, you know, uh, in, to ensure that we're investing in each other, to ensure we provide the opportunity for development, growth, you know, of individuals. So part of you know the the policy is the your uh, the the guidance um, is to ensure that we create some opportunities to ensure they've got the team you know uh, in a in a place where we can actually you know sit talk and develop and counsel you know each other uh, to ensure that uh, we're investing in each other. So if you're a non-supervisor, you know I think we talked about you know you're at work right and you have the opportunity uh, to to telework. Up, up to um, six days per pay period. Um, but that that's kind of the generic guidance that's in there. And for supervisors, it's up to uh, four days. But I, I, I leave that down for the directors and the supervisors to kind of, you know, to ensure that the individual and the work position qualifies uh, for telework, you know, and then to, to ensure that the schedule and the mission requirements are balanced, are balanced out, you know, with, uh, with all of the things that have to get done. Yeah, thank you, sir. And uh, you mentioned about coming to work for the mentorship and the development. And one of the questions is specific to that point. If they haven't seen it yet in the workplace, um, what what can we do moving forward to ensure that they do get that development that was that was integral to bringing them back to the to the in person work, sir? Yeah, so that's a great question. I think you know there's a there's a few things that we I know we're doing uh, as a holistically, you know, with creating you know, high velocity training centers and, you know, some, you know, some uh, onboarding of individuals through training. And, you know, I know the supervisors and the directors, you know, have the responsibility and our coach and teaching and mentoring, you know, uh, teams uh, through uh, not only their daily production requirements, but also the developmental through counseling and, and, and other activities. Sir, if I, if I could add on yeah. to that, um, so anytime you're having a conversation with your supervisor that is development mentorship and counseling and you may not realize it right. uh, that was taught to me a long time ago when i was a young sergeant it's like hey i'm not getting my my monthly uh form or my quarterly form we're not filling this thing out because that's what the regulation requires and they're like well you're 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 misinformed because you're not paying attention of the daily interaction that we have where you're being developed and mentored it might not be on paper but it's the it's the constant back and forth uh, of being in the workplace and having that direct involvement and, and response back. So just because uh, don't take it, don't think that just because you haven't had a sit down in a month or two is my, would be my recommendation is were you developed uh, when a challenge or a question was asked of you or, or, or something that you had that you took to a supervisor and or a peer, did they teach, coach, mentor, counsel you to get you through that and make you better? So I ask everybody to kind of pay attention to that and cognitive of that uh, as we're moving forward because developing of subordinates is very important and peers is very important. And sometimes it happens and we don't even realize it. So that's what I'd like to add. Right. Answer. Yeah, that's a great point, Sergeant Major. You know, I, you know, we all are a product of our experiences and we, when we can vicariously live and learn through those people that have had tremendous experience in this organization, you know, it's just a, uh, it, it's, or other organizations, right? It's just an outstanding opportunity to develop, grow, and uh, understand, you know, what are those things that I could or should be thinking about and or doing to improve myself or set myself up, you know, for success uh, in, in a later opportunity that I might have. Thank you, sir. Um, the next couple are really two parts that I think link together. One is- That was only 100, 300, <laughs> that was only two out of the three. Sir, we're getting there. We are, we are booked for the afternoon. Um, but uh, the two link together, one being what's the guidance for the workforce that is matrix to say the PEO yeah, so and they're following different guidelines. And then second part, sir, is um, are you worried at all about losing 
uh, talented workforce to other competitive telework agreements and in, in different organizations? Yeah, so well, both really good questions. So the the guidance applies, you know, uh, whether you're, you know, you're a matrix employee and or not, you know, because uh, you know the reality is it's still we still have the requirement to work through, you know, to develop mentor, you know, and make sure that we've got the the team, you know, still aligned and understanding where our responsibilities are to to do that. So that's one, and then two, um, you you know, I think uh, I, I look across this team. I, I look across, you know, you know, the really the world. I don't, I don't know if where anyone would want to work anywhere else, right? I mean, the difference that uh, you all are making every single day and the culture in this organization. Now, I'm, I'm being a little facetious. That's in there, but, you know, I, I think it's being part of this team is is pretty special, you know. And uh, you know, I think there's a and having having leadership that's committed to your development, you know, and investing in you, and investing in your success, you know, is is special. You know, that's what makes good teams. You know, it's people that care about each other and come to work, you know, and, and but I I think I'd afford anyone an opportunity to do, you know, whatever they want to do in their life and work wherever they need to, you know, but we just want people on our team that want to come to work and make a difference, you know, and support each other and enable each other's success, you know, so we can all, we can all, you know, go home at night or and, and just feel happy that we've contributed and made a difference in somebody's life and and we've been productive at work. Hey, sir, can I add something on the matrix employees? So we understand the challenge with that. As the CG said, you know, we have the responsibility for those matrix employees to make sure that they get the mentoring and the interaction, um, just like all the other employees. But we understand the challenge in that some of the organizations that are matrix employees are supporting have different types of schedules. So, you know, matrix employees are authorized to follow the work schedules of the customers that they are supporting up to eight telework days per pay period. If it goes to 10, which is 100% telework, it requires uh, coming up to the uh, DCG for approval. Okay. Hey, sir. Uh, Jordan, going back to the previous question though, you know, that's why the, the Giants are, got a great organization. And the Cowboys don't, right? You know. Chaplain, <laughs> yeah, if you could uh, come see me after this, I'm ready. Appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Um, specific to uh, you know coming in person work and and um, for non-vax individuals, is it still required for the non-vax personnel to get tested, and is vaccination still required for uh, for Conus travel? So for CONUS travel, um, there has been no change to the regulation right now. Uh, we've sent up a number of RFIs asking for further guidance, but as of today, yes, it is still required. Um, for testing, as we've said in the past, that is all based on the HPCon level, yeah. um, and currently that is not required. With Bravo. Okay. We'll 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 follow up and we'll put a message out, uh, an answer out specifically on that question, on testing and if it's required based on the uh, current HP con. Okay. Thanks, sir. Um, some other concerns or or I guess uh, suggestions around the building would be to add vending machines on every floor of every building, I guess. Who can the workforce take that up with and provide those suggestions to, or is that right to come through our, our headquarters suggestion box? So they can submit it through the suggestion box, just like all other services on the installation, it's based on utilization, right? So if you recall, we used to have all those services available um, throughout the building. Um, but you can't get vendors to come in, put machines on every floor if they're not going to be utilized. So as in-person um, work starts to ramp up, we will continue to look at the services that are provided. The G4 uh, has that and they will make sure that um, um, the appropriate level of services are in place for the level of uh, in, um, in workplace uh, participation that we have. 
And then if there are other suggestions beyond vending machines or things that you see that need to be changed or you have recommendations, we have a number of feedback mechanisms to include our uh, suggestion box, both virtual and then there's one outside of uh, the cafeteria if you're here local. The system does work because we are in the process right now of updating some uh, water stations throughout the building, in the, the water fountains and, and putting ice machines in off of a request. So that is in the works right now in, in certain areas. So if it doesn't come to your area, please just put it in. If that's something that you're requesting, it goes back to utilization. So. OK, sir. Uh, I guess the folks in the skiff are Cowboys fans. They said you're not allowed in anymore. Yeah, that's right. They're revoking your access. Clearance removed. <laughs> Uh, no, sir, they, uh, they're asking, is there, is there any ex changes to the exception to policy uh, approval process? And then is there also any, you know, general guidance for um, what would be considered uh, for approval for full time uh, telework? Yeah, so um, we, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, if there is a. Um, some sort of uh, accommodation required, you know, that that will go through the normal uh, process. Um, if uh, if if it exceeds the what we put out in general guidance, you know, in terms of uh, non supervisor or supervisory position, you know, then uh, that exception would go through Mr. Nitty. Okay. Any questions in the room? All right. So, you know, the good news is I get an opportunity to go down to the G2, you know, and get an update brief on, you know, all things, uh, you know, Ukraine and all things, you know, um, you know, from the intelligence, you know, section of, you know, they have these forecasts and sometimes their forecasts are right, you know, and sometimes their forecasts aren't right, you know, so, you know, they should stick to, you know, what they know and what they don't know, like football, they should probably stay out of it. <laughs> but, you know, I think, uh, you know, I'll kind of like to end where, where I started. You know, it's a distinct honor for me to be here and just to meet some great people and get to know each and every one of you. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you do. You make a huge difference. Um, and I, I personally appreciated, you know, being on the receiving end of AMCOM support. You know, my soldiers and my team would not have been successful and would not be here today if it wasn't for AMCOM. Uh, and I and I, I will share individual stories, you know, um, as as necessary or, you know, uh, as we get into smaller groups. But I just want to say thank you all for what you're doing. Um, OK, cool. Thanks. Nice. Have a great day. Thank you. Uh, Army strong. Thank uh -huh.